this G. Yeah, they're definitely in good spirits indeed. So we'll see how Clubhouse gets underway and we'll see exactly how this is going to go down. Don't forget, Clubhouse is not a great map for Orglus, but it is a pretty good map coming out for SSG so far, especially playing against them. There's going to be a bit of a repeat of history coming through, as we'll see Orglus with the first band. It's actually going to be a book. Yeah, Buck can do a lot of damage on Clubhouse. There's obviously a lot of potential um, moving down into stock to disrupt any play going on upstairs in, uh, in Cash and CCTV. So, um, you know, you can you can definitely understand that ban. Glaz, again, um, we're not seeing any Glaz all evening, I don't think. I think he's been been permanently banned all evening. He's been a pretty evening. consistent ban um, coming out. But, but again, but there's, from there's August. no surprise. Um, you know, his, his, his power is, uh, is great. But Valkyrie there is going to come out as a defender ban. And the final ban is going to be on August to decide where we're going to go. What do you think? Quick mirror. Mirror. Ooh, Echo. It's always one of the three. It's always Echo, Maestro, or Mirror. I'm not too surprised by that, but I am surprised by the fact that the book got banned out here by Oglus, but Maverick is still on the board here. So I would argue it depends on the take. I would argue you don't really need the book necessarily here because I can understand why they're banning it out and it does make sense for Oculus to do that because you know if they're holding onto an area and they're trying to impact trick onto the kitchen hatch all the book has to do is just open up around that hatch and you can just get a quick kill on just push the person off but not having the book on the board means that Oculus can impact trick pretty easily around the kitchen hatch however this should mean that space station should realize this and they're going to go for a Defenders church push protect instead. Your bombs from being defused by attack. Yeah, and the um, I mean the lineup that they've that they've brought kind of favors either side really. They, they've left themselves open by having two hard breaches there. They're going to be able to go with either you know they're going to be able to open both the ha well sorry all the hatches with Hibana and then move on to open any church wall that they may wish. Um, and that's one of the good things about bringing double hard breach on club. I think it really is something that it can be very important. Um, especially when you start talking about impact tricking and stuff like that, you're able to maybe bait out a little bit of that utility. Um, but with the, being a pulse on the board of Orglus, um, kitchen control is uh, is going to be pretty pretty tricky to get for Space Station Gaming. It is definitely be pretty tricky to get indeed. Um, but I do like the fact that obviously you've been two hard breaches. This, so people talk about how Clubhouse is defender side. Right? It has something like a 57% into the favor of defenders, just pure stats line. But what that kind of ignores is it's very, very dependent on operator bands. And I was talking to a few pros about this, and they seem to think, I seem to get a pretty good consensus that if there's two hard breaches up on the table, including a Maverick, then it does tend to go into the favor of attackers. But, you know, I think you'll find a lot of teams and a lot of lower tier teams will have big struggles on attack getting coordinated. This is not something that's happening between these two teams. These are two experienced pro teams. They know what they're doing in comp, they know how to be coordinating attack, they've got coordination ready. I would say Space Station has looked very, very good on attack most in most recent history. But we just saw August with some pretty good attacks of their own. Yeah, August did a great job on... Well, I think they did a great job on both attack and defense. There was no real one way that Villa seemed to go. It seemed to switch between uh, between being kind of, you know, favoring both of, both the attacking teams and both the defending teams. Um, but I think that you've definitely got a bit of an advantage coming into Clubhouse on the defense, especially when you're able to take Armory first. Because you can see here that August really aren't giving anything away. And they're all playing pretty tight on site, which is something Attackers that you're able to do on this location, purely because of the size of it. Um, and, you, you know, you, you don't need to peek anything at this point. You don't need to risk the roam because the roam on Clubhouse can be a little bit treacherous at times, um, especially if, you know, Jackals start getting brought. There's a lot of good pre-placed drone spots that you can use as an attacker, and that can really, you know, shut pull. down a roam relatively quickly. So, uh, you know, much better idea to have a lot of guys on site ready for that final bloodbath in the few seconds. Did he just put a Thermite charge down and then doesn't detonate it? That's actually really smart if he's done that. I don't think he did because he just opened up dirt, but I don't know, I heard something that just went down on Kitchen. I'm not sure if they're getting ready to just pop something, but no, nothing's going on in the Kitchen. I don't know, sound cues in this are very weird sometimes. I think I heard the dirt tunnel going down, so. But, I mean, that, that could be an alternate strategy as well. You just put the Thermite Charge down, then you push down on the other side. That could have been good, but we're going to see Space Station just try and turn around now. They have an open up dirt, but they don't have a shield, and they don't have, you know, smokes or anything like that, so it's good. 
I don't think it's going to be a very hard push to actually make happen here, especially when you've got Acid playing in there. But you could also say alternatively, that's actually really smart for Space Station 2 because them opening up Dirt forces Legion to go into the Dirt tunnel and play it, and now he can't impact, that impact trick. Jaeger's going to go down first of all, however, as Space Station starts to make their push. Rampy does have control of blue. Has the cross available to him? He does know that someone around here is going to try and push them out. 15 seconds left to go. The push has to come down. Nade moves into the site. Oh no, there goes Rampy. And Charlo moves in. He takes down Yeti. It's now a 4v2. The control of the site still into the form of Orgles here. It looks like Charlo is going to be able to put, sorry, Redeemer puts on the diffuser. And SSG will be able to take control of Arsenal. Now it's going to be a hard retake coming out from Orgles as they attempt to rotate around. SSG looking pretty good in control here. Redeemer takes down Brian. Now it's all down to crazy. We see him do some, do some pretty crazy things before. Defender On the last map, let's see if he can pull off something here. He's going to rotate all the way into kitchen. No one's holding the hatch and could get away with something here. He does still have a nitro cell. He takes out the flank wash drone. They know he's up here. He's going to go for the pre fight, but Redeemer's just better. And he takes down crazy easily as that. Round number one going into Space Station. Very convincing. Space Station did a great job there of establishing a lot of control, which is something that Orglus kind of let them have to a degree with the way that they played that site. But Space Station really didn't sleep on it. They were able to take very good control, open up what they needed to open up, and essentially execute the plan whilst having full armory control and picking off players as they went. It's a difficult place for Orglus to be because they didn't really do anything too wrong. I think they just maybe lost one or two little gunfights there, which caused, you know, quite a large effect later on in enabling the control that Space Station, you know, were allowed to gain. Yeah, and, and I agree with that to a certain extent, but I think the big saving grace for Space Station there was that, so they can't get that kitchen hatch open because they don't have a bug. So they can't book around it. They're relying on the sledge to do a little bit of work there, but you've also got to worry about the pulse on the board. But instead, they opened up dirt, they're not attending to push but dirt because they don't really have the operators to do it. Instead, they're baiting it out. They're droning it out. They're convincing Orglus that someone is going to push dirt now. Even though it doesn't really make much sense to do so with the current lineup, Orglus take that bait. They move the Legion into dirt. And now Kitchen Hatch is open. Now Space Station have control. Now they have space. And now they can go for their execute. Really well done from Space Station to take quick control. It was kind of a shame that Rampy lost his gunfight where I thought he was going to win it rather convincingly mean Rampy is a record breaker at the moment. He is, uh, I believe, he's the record holder for most kills in a single map in a pro game. Yeah, he dropped, uh, was it 22? 22. 22, yeah. it's, it's a crazy number to think about, especially when you're talking about, you know, the highest level of Siege. For, for one player to be that influential and be able to pick up that many kills, it's, it's an operator that you're really going to have to do something to deal with. I will say, uh, during that game though, just before it, Rampy was the number one in ranked in NA, and he's on the Ash. That is not a man you're going to start winning gunfights against. He's on Ash, he loves it. Okay, Rampy is the definition of someone who loves it. So yeah, there we go. Just Ash meaning through all the way through. Redeemer is going to be running out ahead of him. Already, Rampy has control of Secret. That means the rest of the push can start to go through. Because all Rampy is going to do is just going to hold the angle here. And then the rest of the push is going to come through. He's going to put a flank wash drone as well. And this is looking pretty good. I think, yeah, so he's going to hold it here. And you can see where the rotate is as well. So this is really good. It's the same angle that he played last time and he was successful, but also very patient, only pushing it at the right time, waiting for the rest of his team to be able to get into position. And Sensing that's something that's really crucial is knowing the right time to apply that pressure and apply that aggression and just patiently sat there waiting, watching the angle, but, you know, quite passively. He's not really in all too much danger there, especially because Orglis aren't playing any sort of role. c 4 toss is going to come out there, but it is not going to connect. Unfortunately, for the pulse of uh, sorry, the uh, the pulse of Yeti there, he's uh, he's going to miss out on that one, which is a little bit of a shame because he maybe would have wanted to save that for any kitchen pressure, which Thinking Aid is now being uh, you know he's able to apply that pretty freely. The pulse has been baited out. I think it was it was actually himself that baited the uh, the nitro cell out, so he's able to operate now in kitchen pretty freely, and it should free them up to maybe get kitchen hatch open um, if they've got an angle down onto anyone that may be trying to impact it. Rampy's actually left his position at the top of Secret and he's going to go rotate back. Bosco is going to pick up a kill onto the Pulse. So that's going to be a lot of information lost at this stage. Yeah, a lot of information gone and that is really critical at this stage as well. As you mentioned, 
and now SSG have a lot of control. They just opened up the kitchen hatch as well, and they have a rotate from bottom of main stairs into Arsenal, but Rampy just opened up. So great utility usage coming out so far from Space Station. They know they have the entry into the site. Smoke's gonna go down, but that's a little too early. The push hasn't even come down Big Bright yet, and this man is already premature of smoking. I guess there's only there's only 30 or so seconds left on the clock, but you, you're right in what you say. You can definitely save those smokes for later on. Rampy's going to pick up a kill onto Asif, but my man is going to be waiting around the corner to trade that one straight back out. 10 seconds left on the timer now. Thinking Nade coming down dirt tunnel, putting some shots in. Can't seem to find the head of Crazy. Bosco picking up one onto my man. Crazy getting one onto Thinking Nade. And another two quick kills come out for Space Station. The diffuser was down at that stage. Bosco and Shala there picking up the final two. Great ability coming out from Space Station as well to consistently play objective. They're concentrating around getting a plant. They're not concentrating around getting kills. I will say, though, that Rampy has consistently lost that fight in blue. Although, at that point, it wasn't really his fault because he's inevitably going to get traded there anyway. And I think he just saw the opportunity and just went for it. That's completely fine because Ash dying at that point, you're not really using any utility. And he's doing that so that they can get the plant down. So him dying from blue is better than his teammate dying from Arsenal and him getting the kill in blue. Yeah, the, the the space and the opportunity that he opens up in the objective by removing the man from the objective is outweighed because the guy that kills him in blue is able to get traded as soon as he comes Defender to the doorway or through the soft church wall. So it, it's kind of a worthwhile trade at that point. He knows he's probably going to die doing it, but essentially it, it's, it's, a, it's a worthwhile trade, it's worth it. Um, we're going to see a change of bomb site now, which is Probably a pretty good idea from August. They do seem to not really have much of a response for the push that Space Station are putting on them. Um, downstairs in Armory, so they're going to opt to go up to Cash instead. Maybe avoiding this because of the fact that Maverick's available. Maybe they didn't want to have to try and deal with that. But Space Station Gaming haven't actually brought the Maverick. But I also think that Ogles banned out the books specifically for a downstairs defense around that to play around that kitchen hatch. But both times they they didn't manage to successfully impact trick that kitchen hatch to keep it closed. It got opened eventually, and they went for the same push every single time. And generally, you'll find that teams, if they lose two defenses in a row, they'll go somewhere else. Yeah, it's definitely time to switch things up at that point and just, you know, reset. Treat it like a, uh, you know, a little bit of a reset and, and try and get something else happening. But, I mean, Buck's got a lot of value on this bomb site as well for does, trying yeah. to remove any sort of bandit. If there's, you know, correctly placed, correctly placed ADSs, um, they can cause quite a lot of problem. I think Thatcher there maybe just taking those out, uh, which is going to allow Thinking Nade to maybe rotate onto that window and, uh, and make it a little bit uncomfortable for Crazy to try and get a bandit trick off, which is going to be a tough job for him anyway because they've got double hard breach. Um, but it all depends on how they apply that. I think that's going to be the... Is that the second Bandit battery destroyed, maybe? Um, no, he no, he's, 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 he's stable. Still, oh, he's still nice. Right. Very well done from Crazy. But Flashbangs are going to go down. That's going to stop him from being able to Bandit trick. But Big Bri just white peaks down and takes down Charlie. That's already Habana gone. That means they need to push through this east wall and get it open. But the nade comes through from Crazy. But no, he does avoid it. But that wall gets opened up eventually. Space Station looking pretty good because they've opened that wall up at about two minutes, and that is very, very quick to open that wall up. Yeah, I mean, they've lost Shallow in the process, but with the wall now being open and only using one um, exothermic charge on it, I think they're able now to rotate back through into construction um, and perhaps get one of the walls open there looking on into sight. Unfortunately, did suffer a disconnect there from Bosco. I'm sure he'll get himself back in the game as soon as possible, but that isn't going to play into Space Station Gaming's favour at all at this stage, as that now takes us into a five versus three in favour of Orglus. Yeah, looking pretty good for Orglus so far, and they've still got a person playing on top of Garage. And, you know, without a glass, this is fairly, and without a Capital as well, without needs, this is really hard to dislodge someone. I think Thinking is actually going to go below here and try and frag him out. But one minute left to go on the clock, smokes are going to go down. SSG is starting to lose time here, and they're starting to lose a little bit of patience, it seems. And I was thinking it, it's going to rotate all the way around. It's like Space Station could just kind of hammer it on the nail and just push all the way through this east server wall and see exactly what they can do. They do have quite a lot of utility still available to them, but they're starting to run out of time. What? Rampy just runs all the way into the site. He picks up Big Bri. Acid goes down as well, and it's all good for Space Station as they start to go for the plant. Rampy still taking damage from the Legion Mine. He doesn't care, but Yeti will pick him up. The diffuser does go down. Space Station in a pretty good place. we will still got a pulse on the board, however. Yeti going to rotate all the way downstairs. Thinking Nade still holding down the rotate as he pushes all the way in. Oh my god! Thinking Nade, it will go down. Redeemer picks up a man in return, however. Now it's a 1v2. It's all down to Redeemer. 
He's going to try and redeem the dream. It's actually crazy. He's actually down now. Redeemer will pick him up. Redeemer with a double kill. It's not frag bite, baby. He'll go on the way through. Space station tip round of three. Despite a disconnect, despite an early pick. Oh my god. What a play from Redeemer. It really didn't look like a round that Space Station were going to win, and then all of a sudden Rampy rushes into sight, is able to pick up a quick kill, thinking they's able to back him up and pick up a second. And it just made it so... I think that August maybe at that point were really not expecting that kind of aggression to come out from Space Station, especially after having suffering um, a disconnect like that. So we are actually going to go to a rehost, um, and we're just going to get Bosco back into the lobby, get all the players in, get the round count correct, and then we'll be going back in very shortly. But an explosive start, I think it's fair to say, from SSG. Yeah, uh, explosive start, especially from Rampy there. His ability to run into sight and kill people is uh, basically just what Ash does. As you actually read the description on Ash, the bio, it just says run in and kill people. That's all it says. Shift W. That's the tutorial <laughs> right there and then. But yeah, Rampy's great at doing that, and I think he was the saving grace there because him getting that entry kill gave them control of the site immediately. Oglas had absolutely nothing in response, and I think that Yeti could have played it a little bit better as well. I think he was trying to deny the plant from below, but at that point, it's kind of over. You've lost control of the site. He might have been able to play it a little bit better if he played with my man and tried to refrag him off him instead yeah. of pushing all the way up onto the, the stairs and, uh, and and dying at the late time. Well, it's it's usually typical to see a ACOG playing up on the catwalk, Yeah. usually a dock or something like that, so they're able to you know revive if they manage to get caught by a grenade or something like that. Um, so it was a little bit odd to see the pulse playing up on garage catwalk like that. You would have expected him to be downstairs. Um, especially because the the three remaining players on SSG were all outside on Repel or yeah. on the top of the roof outside the east um, cash it was wall. So really good adaptation coming out from SSG. Yeah. Losing two early players is not a thing you want to do. But as I said, they got that east wall open really, really early on, and that cannot be underestimated. I'd say that the average time for teams getting it open, depending on how coordinated they are, is only about one minute thirty. So them getting it open. 30 seconds earlier than that. I say 1 minute 30, 1 minute 40, kind of depends on your like utility that you've got available. But them doing that without a Capital, without a Burk, without a Maverick, they didn't pick any of that and they still got it open really quickly due to great coordination. So yeah, really well played from them coming out. I'm kind of amazed they didn't actually pick up Crazy when it was rotating. With the grenade from thinking they yeah, it was rotating off the, off the Bandit trick. It's like you say, it comes down to that coordination and you could see that um, Thatcher wasted absolutely zero time getting straight up onto the roof, deploying the EMP, destroying the ADS, then going on to pressure the bandit, making it look like they were just going to try and Thatcher the wall and all this sort of stuff. And then the grenade comes through, and it was just, it was that synergy and that you know teamwork, cohesion, you know all that, all those sort of good things that really made it very easy. And I think that had they not got that wall open so early and they suffered the disconnect, that round could have gone a different way. It definitely could have done. And uh, and their whole, as I mentioned, they kind of just went, okay, we've lost control. We need everyone to play together again. It's the 3v5. We're just going to push into the site. They send Rampy in first. Even if Rampy dies there, it's not the end of the world because they can trade off of him. They can still get the plant down. They can still recover the round. And that is the important thing about Rainbow, ladies and gentlemen. Do not give up. Anything is clutchable. 1v5, do it in my sleep. <laughs> Well, I mean, from the previous game, we saw Crazy. Yeah, that looked like a very impossible position yeah. from where he was. He was, you know, he was on study balcony. He was outside, just trying to hold the plant. And all of a sudden, he picks up a 3K because, you know, the, I, I, the players arise kind of lined up a little bit for him, but they didn't really have any choice because of where the diffuser was. There's a guy that's got to be diffusing it. The doorway's right there, right in front of it. So there's no option but to line up to try and save the guy that's diffusing. Um, but, you know, an impossible Definitely. play but something that does get picked up. And it's like you say, sometimes you've just got to throw that aggression at it and kind of try and catch your opponent off guard. And I think that's what Rampy was able to do there. And, you know, thinking they'd obviously backing him up, picking up the kill straight away after him as well. Yeah, and and then again, just great plays coming out from all of his base station. Their coordination has been pretty unparalleled throughout this matchup. Ogilus a little bit struggling here on the defense on a defender side map. Although, you know, I did mention before, with a bunch of hard breaches, this does turn around, but I don't think we can attribute to that. Space Engine have been playing this very, very well. They've been playing it very, very smart at that. They've looked at exactly what August's setup is, 
and this is something we mentioned last time as well when August won their defense, they don't tend to play different setups. Yeah, I think the way that they played Armory, it, it, sorry, the way that August defended Armory, mm -hmm. they tried to do the same thing again, but SSG just had such a good response for tearing it down the first time that it was just like rinse and repeat for the second time. Although I will say um, the second time they sent Nade through the and he managed to pick up people on the cross, which was much better from them. So you can even still see, even though Space Station are winning rounds and they're winning against the same setup, they're still constantly improving. Yeah, and that's the difference when you start thinking about, um, you know, a team that's operating at that, you know, that high level of competitiveness is they're able to make these in-house adaptations on the fly in the space of a round that lasts, you know, three minutes and, you know, 45 second prep phase. So it, it really does sort of, attest to how much how, how good of a team they are but i mean we were kind of expecting something similar to what's been going on i mean ssg have obviously beaten august on club on uh, clubhouse before um so i don't think anything too out of the ordinary yet but i think the way that august have been losing these rounds has been quite convincing it's not really been all too close it's just been about perfect dismantling that's coming out from them and people may be looking at this and going yeah Okay, you may be right. You may be seeing that they're tearing it apart, but you just said stun up. It's it's kind of attack decided when it's hard reaching, but it's not about that. It's about the way that they've been playing. It's about the way that they've been adapting. It's about. I think a lot of this does also come down to Lycan, to you know coaches' roles. I'm I'm a coach myself, so I'm a bit biased. But coaching roles can't be underestimated, and the fact that you know SSG have had such a great performance in recent history. I think a lot of that does come down to Lycan and also the prep work that's coming from the team. They've been putting the work in recently. They've been able to adapt on the fly much, much better. And this is really paying off for them. And as I said, I think this is a big reason why Orgulus coming into this matchup are definitely not the favorites. It'd be interesting to see what happens when Orgulus get onto the attack because we've seen them attacking quite well yeah. on both the previous maps that we've seen this evening for them. Um, I mean. To be fair, we saw them defend very well on border as well. August were very powerful on defense, but they seem to have very well established positions, locations, and, and ideas of how they were holding things. They were very fluid in the way that they moved through the map. And that's something that Clubhouse doesn't really allow for. You, your, your movement through the map is fairly well restricted because the hatches are just so much more important yeah. than they are on a map like Border, for example, where you can leave the hatches open and then rotate down them later. If you leave hatches open on Clubhouse, you're just leaving yourself far too open for the attackers to push when that eventually does come through. So I guess that Clubhouse is a map. It doesn't really suit Orglus and their playing style from what we've seen this evening. And I don't know if it's a case where they're going to have to start trying to roam a little bit more and take a few more risks and get a couple of early picks because ultimately just playing on site isn't working all too well for them. Um, so we'll have to see how it plays when we, when we get back in. A little break is never a bad thing for a team that's just lost three rounds on the bounce. That I will that say. Is very, that is very true. I would like to see Olgas get a little bit more experimental with this, but it looks like we are just about ready to get back into this matchup with everyone back in, hopefully. No more disconnects, no more problems coming through as we're getting back into this incredible series between Space Station Gaming and Orglus. And as I said, I want to see Orglus do something a little bit different here, a little bit out of meta, because you can't beat Space Station at their own game. You can't beat Space Station in the prep work. You can't beat them where it counts. You have to take them somewhere that they're not comfortable with. Where do you think that place is going to be? I think it's going to be Bar. You think, the, you think we're going to see a Bar? I th so during the invite calls as well, we saw Tune Squad, which is uh, Talon's new team combined with the X Nomads roster with uh, A Factor as well, and they did a really good um, bar defense. I think there was a mistake with the rehost. Yeah, unfortunate. It happens. It happens to the best of us. So we will be just getting the players back into the lobby and um, just fixing the uh, the scoreline there. Obviously, it was uh, SSG did actually pick up that uh, that third round despite losing the man. Um, so we'll, yes, yeah. I just couldn't believe it. <laughs> we'll be getting the players back into the lobby um, very, very shortly. But moving on to why you think there may be a bar. Can we expand on that just a little bit more? I think, well, I don't think that it's going to be a bar. You'd like it to be a, like yeah, to see a bar. A I would like to see them go somewhere different. Also, there's no book. 
And I think that without a book, Bar becomes a little bit different because, you know, people look at Bar and they're like, this is completely inviolable. You can't hold this site. Then Choose Squad come in. They take, the, they take people there and people have no idea how they want to attack it because they're not thinking on that basis of why this is undefendable. They just immediately assume it's undefendable. We don't even think about it. Most teams won't even dry run an attack or a defense around Bar. I think it'd be a very bold play for Orglus to come out with a with a bar defense. But having said that, if Armory isn't working all too well for them, then it might be worth trying to give it a go because you never know, it might really catch SSG off guard. Um, yeah. We could see some absolute brilliance come out from Orglus. They maybe got something in the back pocket that they've not yet shown us. And ultimately, if, if, you're, if the Armory isn't going all too well, which should be a site that the defenders do okay on. I know we talk about there being a lot of yep. hard destruction and there's a lot of potential to open absolutely everything, especially with Maverick being available. So I, I think that, you know, a bar wouldn't be too bad to see. We've not got a glass, so that removes a lot of the worry of, you know, any long lines of sight or smoking sure. off and yeah. being able to brute force your way in. And I think that if they manage to catch SSG out, SSG maybe wouldn't be left with the right operators because two hard breaches don't really have all too much value when attacking that site. That is true. Um, something that Super brought up um, during when I casted with him during the North American calls during stage one, um, he brought up the fact that if you're bringing two hard breaches, you're kind of taking away your like kill factor, right? Your ability to start getting frags and your ability to play those ranking operators. I mean, we didn't see that from Redeemer because he's playing the frag mate, frag and mate. I guess he's just born for it. But, you know, some people are like that and it does work out for them. You play for, you play Thermite for the gun, right? You know, that's, that's why Redeemer plays it. Not because he's a support, because he's an entry. But we will see, finally, getting back into Clubhouse. So this could be Space Station Gaming take on Orglus. We're getting into round number four, four hopefully, as the uh, yep. Space Station are 3 0 up so far, going flawless. Let's see how it goes down. So, we are going to see a Church Arsenal Room defense coming out yet again from Orglus. They seem awfully committed to this strategy. I do like the Maestro coming out from Yeti, however. But I still just feel like Space Station is going to take this in the exact same way they have been doing. Maybe Attackers with minor improvements. They could one. rotate to a Church attack, but I think they realize that Orglus invests quite a lot into Church. Yeah, there's, there's, like you say, the only main difference is we're seeing Yeti now pulling out on the Maestro and not taking the pulse, which I don't know if that's, you know, not. A, I'm not going to say it's not a great idea, but I really think that the pulse holds quite a lot of value, especially being able to tell where the push is coming from and when players are going to be making that drop or when they're going to be pushing down main stairs. I think it's fine, honestly, because I can't see where the pulse is actually done much here, um, even on the upstairs take, and I think that, you know, even... So when there's no glass and he's banned, the attackers can't see through smokes. But if you have a maestro or bulletproof, attackers that means the defenders the can see through smokes. So if smokes are going down, you know, the attackers are actually going against themselves here. I mean, we've not really seen any smoke so far from Space Station, but oh look, Orglus, they have a smoke. Yeah, maybe they're looking to play off those evil eyes and make good use of the uh, of the smoke. I mean, we've seen Brian picking the smoke before on this bomb site, and he has been able to sort of stem the flow of the attackers, but it hasn't been all too uh, you know successful to this point. We're going to see Rampy on his very typical entry into garage, but crazy there, just playing a little bit off site. He's going to be making a nuisance of himself over on the main stairs, and could this be a small attempt? No, he's going to make his way straight back down onto Church Wall, back where he's safe getting ready to place some bandit batteries down no doubt i thought that could have maybe been the sign of a of a tiny bit of a roll and just a bit of a um, you know trying to just get a pick or get something get something going for august because i think that's what it's going to take at this stage it's going to take a little bit of a flare a little bit of a bold individual play to be able to break this mold because at the moment ssg are just doing what they've done normally they're able to take all the map control that they want pretty much for free they're able to open up the hatches and they're able to work down onto the site yeah a bit of a bit of jive, a bit of groove coming out here, but we're going to see how exactly that's going to go down. EMP is being used so effectively here. That should be a beautiful nade, but oh no! Not thinking too hard about that nade, as he will start to go through, but not get the pick just yet. But the ADS are getting burned by the EMPs, is something Space Station should be doing consistently throughout the series already. That is looking really good for them to be able to play off the nades quite like that. He's actually just put another ADS down in blue, so the man should be able to play this around this quite well. 
they surely don't know that ADS is up, so it looks like they're shifting their attack completely. This is much slower for Space Fish than they were doing before. Yeah, they've certainly not got as much of the floor open up in Kitchen, and that's a little bit weird considering that there's no pulse, because surely there's a little bit of a worry of, um, you know, a Nitro if you're going to be going and trying to operate in Kitchen if pulse is there, but with pulse not being there, I would have thought that that would have got opened a little bit quicker, um, just so that they can maybe try and avoid the impact trick, and get the hatch open and then start working on from there. You can see there a pretty tight angle being held down in blue ramp, he's just going to quickly check his drone, see if he can maybe pick up this kill onto my man or call out for the nade. The nade does come through and it does some very good damage down there onto my man taking him up to uh sorry taking him down to around 25 rampy is going to make his way back up to the hatch just to see if he can get any sort of a peek down there onto my man as he's uh he's just trying to keep his, his himself out of harm's way there keep himself away from the grenades but with 20 seconds left and all 10 on the board saying that yet he's going to pick up a great kill onto chala and rampy's going to get that kill he was ever so desperate for onto my man 10 seconds left now on the clock rampy peeking through picks up the kill onto yeti Acid going to get one of his own onto Thinking Nade. Two kills coming out there in quick succession. Quickly leads us into a one versus three. Bosco is going to get cut down by Acid. And Orglus are going to take their first round on defense on Armory. Much, much better defense coming out from Orglus there because this time, you, you know, you're saying how they should have got Kitchen Hatch open earlier. But the constant contesting that was coming out from a man in blue, he played that very, very well himself. He's constantly on there. He doesn't let Rampy take control as early as he did previously. And Space Station were make, wasting a lot of time in utility to try and force him out of that position so they could go for a push. They tried to do the same push they did last time, where they just open up the side of Arsenal and they push in through that. Yeti completely denies all of that with Maestro. Yeti there just baiting out the clash pick and maybe forcing Bosco to switch off the Thatcher onto the Zephyr there on the six pick. Um, that could be quite crucial because Bosco has been doing a great job so far on Thatcher of being able to, like you said earlier, effectively use the EMPs to destroy the ADS devices. Using the EMPs on ceilings and floors is a very, very good way of being able to deal with that. And that was something that was so, so crucial last time that Orglus held this defense is the nade that came through that ultimately enabled the armory, uh, sorry, ultimately enabled the CCTV wall to be open. But this time, we've no bandit. We don't have a bandit. And then I, I'm not I'm not upset about that from August. I would like to see maybe a mute Ten come out here. Remaining. Just because, you know, C4, shotgun playing close angles, which we've already Five seen from England remaining. be very, very effective during the last map. Maybe August just aren't Attackers comfortable with doing that here. I'm not sure how I feel about the castle, off. given that Space Station of Bruno a sledge every single round. And an Ash, and now they've got the uh, Zephyr with the lifelines. I just, I think that you've got to have something to try and keep hold of that wall because as soon as that wall gets opened, the attackers have got the angle into garage, they've got the angle into the rest of the site. If they get control of the window on the other side, then they've got a decent cross. All of a sudden, you're just not feeling very comfortable in the site at all, and it kind of leaves it open for the attackers just to, you know, just to sort of take it. I think you've got to hold some investment in that wall. We're seeing the wall there be open at uh, 2 minutes 20 seconds, so. A little bit, uh, a little bit sooner than last time it was open, but uh, very, very you know, quick. nonetheless, it's 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 a lot of time to be uncomfortable in the site and rampy there on the repel is just going to be looking to see if he can get a peek onto anyone, which uh, is probably going to be a little bit difficult for him. I don't think that the players of August are going to be exposing themselves all too much. They obviously know they've not brought the uh, the right operators to deal with, uh, you know, keeping the wall up, sh shut. Um, so they're going to have some sort of a plan as to how they're going to play off this. And I think he may have just destroyed an evil eye there, which yeah. is going to be a Knock bit down. of a shame for Yeti. Yeah, oh, and Orgos have played that um, micro camp before where they put it in the corner there. And it's, it's kind of hard to spot out, but, you know, Space Station have got a control here. I'm just looking, have they opened up the window there onto server that was castled? I don't think so. I oh, know they have done. What I was going to say is that it can be bad to castle that out because if they get control of the site and plant, you now have no way of like jumping out and putting pressure that way. So, yeah, do's and don'ts there, but it's going to be opened up and it looks like Space Station going to go for a fairly traditional attack for what they were doing before. I think it's going to be all about, again, just rampy, just trying to get in, just go for kills. But that that's not necessarily a bad thing. You're not relying on that because he can get traded. But he's actually going to go below. And he does have the soft destruction. He is castled out here, so he does have control of stock. They could go for a construction push. But my man all the way from Oil Pit will pick up Thinking Nade. Rampy's actually going to make his way through into Lounge, it seems. He's going to be joining out for himself here. 
So a little bit of bad coordination coming out, but I assume they already know that downstairs is clear, so it shouldn't be that bad. But the Noma man is still on the prowl. This man's looking for kills. He's on the Jaeger. He needs the kills. Rampy, again, another man who needs the kills, is going to get all the way in. Does take down Crazy with a nice headshot. Now it's 40 seconds left to go. Now SSG is starting to run out of time. He knows that the Jaeger's playing secret. He knows that someone's on the garage. Chow going to push all the way up here. He's getting Legion Mind. He has to get the kill, and there we go. He will get it. Yet he goes down, and now 30 seconds left to go. Redeemer there going to pick up that kill onto my man down in oil pit. Four versus two in favor of... <coughs> sorry, in favor of SSG. And, uh, and Brian now going to be left on the smoke. Just trying to deny this plant as the push comes through from the garage. Is he going to be able to pick up this kill? He does pick up the down onto Rampy. He's going to switch to the shotgun. Is he going to be able to pick up any kills with that? He is. He's going to pick up one onto Redeemer. He's going to peek his way out. But there's a fear is going to catch him. Bosco there picking up a double kill to finish things off and Space Station are going to win that round. A little bit of a different different round to what we've seen. They managed to get the wall open very early, but with how Yeti was playing on Garage Catwalk, he made it very difficult for them to do anything. They had to take a lot of control, and the castles really slowed them down. And the Oglis weren't too far away from that one, I don't think. No, they definitely weren't, and it was all about time management from them because their setup and the way that they were playing around it, especially Yeti on the Maestro, He's kind of uncontestable in that angle. And when they didn't have nades available, because my man made a great rotate, and I can't just underestimate enough from that how much that almost threw that round into Oculus' favor, because he's picking nade before he can really do anything there in that round on the on the stairs. Kind of poor flank watch drones coming out from SSG. They should really expect someone to do that on oil pit, Attackers because it's a very common peak spot to come out. But... I mean, that's all, you know, hindsight 2020. I think what it did do is it removed Sledge's ability to be able to quickly deal with castle barricades downstairs, and that certainly slowed them that's on later on into the round when they were looking for I'm, that I'm more control. I'm mainly concerned about where Yeti was playing, because if you notice, as soon as that pick went down, that entire push into garage completely came to a halt. They couldn't push him out anymore, whereas what they, you know, were intending to do there, I, I hope, is that just a need him out of that spot. Yeah, definitely, and I think that Yeti's probably going to be playing up there yet again. He's got a, uh, I think he must have had an ADS up there last time, but I think it was the fear that managed to burn that from outside with yep. the lifeline, um, just to allow thinking they to, uh, to get the nade through. But it's, uh, like I said, it wasn't too far away from Orglis. I think there's certainly a lot of value in going here again and just trying to try it. Um, the break has certainly done him a little bit of good. They did manage to pick up that first round after the short rehost that we did have, but SSG is still coming out pretty dominant. And again, at least we've got the mute this time because that mute should be able to hold that armory wall, uh, sorry, that cash wall for just a little bit of time. Stay back. They definitely should be able to. What I would kind of like to see from SSG, and I know they probably won't do it because they tend to do the same attack, if it just works for them and they'll just kind of just improve on it as they go. And you know, it, sh it should be good for them, but I kind of would like to see them abuse the fact that the castles are going down where they are. So they put a castle down onto supply room door into lounge, and that could allow Rampy to go below and just kind of abuse that angle. Thinking they're already finding a fight, however, not looking too good for him, but they have managed to open up a garage here. They should be, uh, should be able to cut off the cross. That's a very weird angle for Nade to try and take there, but I think he was convinced someone was playing on the stairs. Either that, or he just picked a Legion Man. I didn't quite see. No, a difficult angle to peek, and uh, that's the rest of the garage going to be getting opened up. That's certainly going to make Yeti feel pretty uncomfortable in there. We've got Rampy out on Eastern Balcony. He's going to be desperately trying to find this kill onto Yeti, but the smoke grenade is going to come out, and that's going to save Yeti and allow him to get back down onto his, uh, his little safe place over on that garage catwalk behind his deployable shield. I'm not sure if that ADS has got any uses left in it. My man there really struggling to uh, to get rid of that drone, and that's probably going to cost him because Shala is going to be all too aware of where my man is playing now. Rampy going to pick up that kill onto Acid, thinking they'd get in another one onto Yeti. Very quickly, it's turned into a five versus three. Rampy is going to pick up another as Crazy tries to peek out. He's definitely aware there's another one there. Manages to hit another shot, taking out Brian, thinking they going to get my man as he rotates up and that's going to be a very quick conclusion to round number six for SSG. I'll mention it again. Rampy is, I'm pretty sure he still is, number one ranked in NA. He's playing on Ash. It's not a person you want to peek like that. Or at all, really. If I was, if I was Oglis, I would be terrified of that man. Outside on East and he's picking your operators and you're trying to refrag him. 
what I'm going to say is, who's peaking? Who is peaking Rampy in such a powerful position, or such a powerful operator that he's consistently being able to do insanely well on? And he's just getting so many impact frags coming in, and he's just opening it all up. And it's just looking terrible for Augless. They can't win a gunfight against him. And that's been the, the cause of so many victories for Space Station, of Rampy's ability to go in and just kill people. It's the R4C. It's got to be. It's not, no, no. It's not the R4C. I'll tell you. The R4C is not as good as everyone thinks it is, but it's the Ash mentality. Once you're on the Ash, you believe you can win every single gunfight. And that confidence, combined with Rampy's just innate ability to just kill people, I think is what brings them around him. It was, it, it was a difficult challenge for the guys on August to make because they were going at it with uh, Mutant Smoke, so they likely got the SMG-11. And in that sort of a scenario, it's, it's going to be a very difficult fight to take. But we are going to see a switch of sides now as SSG are now on their defensive phase, and that obviously allows August to switch over onto their attacking phase. So we're going to see Crazy on the Ash. Is he going to be able to sort of reply or respond to how successful Rampy was on the, on the Ash for SSG? Yeah. We will have to see. But uh, maybe, maybe he'll put himself on a ramp and do some crazy things to launch them into the space station. I'm not too sure about that. Um, but I, I, I'm, I'm excited to see how SSG hold this because they were obviously so successful at attacking it. There's got to be something in that as to, you know, usually if a team can attack a site fairly well, they've usually got a pretty good idea of how to defend a site fairly well. And if they're, if they're able to defend it against the way that they attack it, then that's something that's definitely worth you know, really paying a lot of attention to because August at this stage are going to obviously try and take it the way that they know how to take it. But if they can, uh, you know, adapt and take it the way that SSG were taking it with taking good control of Secret and over on Blue and get some hatches open and apply some pressure that way, we could see this shift a little bit now and August pick up a couple of rounds. Potentially, potentially, and we were talking about this before. We're interested in seeing how Oglus do here, and they have already got quite a lot of control. It does look like they're going to go for a moto push, however, because they just use a thermite there, and they're burning ADSs, and yeah, it seems like they're going to drop down moto, try and open up the church wall, and push that way instead. It seems kind of obvious, but the way that Oglus is kind of shifting their attack at the moment seems like maybe they're not actually going to do that, because I'm not sure why Brian's going bottom of main stairs if they are actually going to do that, and we see Chowler is ready to bandit trick this out. So, it's kind of both ways here at the moment. I'm not really sure where Ogles is just wanting to push it, but they have a lot of options. We talked about this already, that they have, they're giving themselves options constantly. They're certainly going to need to do something with blue stairs in order to able to, you know, in order to get some control. You can see there that the double hard breach is working as, uh, as the wall certainly gets open. My man's going to pick up a grenade kill onto Bosco. Chal is going to get one onto Brian. Crazy going to trade it straight back out with one of his own onto Thinking Nate. Crazy with a double kill, picking another one up onto Chala. Four versus two now in favor of SSG. Rampy there finding a great wall bang through the wall onto my man Yeti. Trading that kill straight back out. Redeemer. Oh, he was so close in stopping the diffuser going down. Yeti going to pick up that kill. And that's going to be a round on the board for August. They attacked that very, very well there. Yeah, I just want to point out, he. I don't think he could have been close because that's a hard wall where he was shooting. Because it's church. He's planting in the corner of church. Oh, it looked like uh, from the, the spectator, spectator it did look like it was very, really close. Very, very weird, isn't it? Sometimes, but yeah, I just want to point that out. That uh, I mean, it's still like we've seen Redeemer clutch one v fours, one v threes before on the Maestro. He's done very well before, but Orglus is looking very, very, very good right now. We're moving into round number eight. We'll see how they do this, but Space Station, you know, there was some mistimings coming out from them, like especially for me when. The church wall got opened up. They didn't impact trick at all. Attackers need despite to the fact, I mean, they bomb. had that option, right? They had the option to, you know, they had the legion, so they could have impact trick the church wall rather than trying to impact trick uh, the kitchen hatch. And it kind of seems obvious to me that Oglus don't want to go for a kitchen hatch take because their book ban, to me, was kind of based around them denying that. I mean, they're still bringing the sledge. So they've still got the potential for that destruction, but I do know what you mean. Um, kitchen just is a very dangerous place to go when you're looking at a pulse on the other side because of the information that they can gather and obviously the potential nitro throw. So 
I, I think Oculus did a great job there, and I think it was just a case of the grenade came out from, um, I think it was my man came out with the early grenade kill, and the wall got opened at the same time. They did a great job of opening the wall, they just struggled to impact that, purely because they used a Hibana on one side, and the Exothermic on the other. So, I think they'd have probably maybe got one or the other, perhaps not both. And if they'd have got the exothermic, there'd have probably still been a couple of Hibana pellets that went off and created a little bit of a hole to make it difficult. So I think you can't really take anything away from August that round. They did a great job of getting that wall open, but are they going to be able to repeat that this time? Or is SSG going to be able to adapt ever so slightly and, uh, and just stop that from happening? Definitely. They had a really good shift to their attack as well. I still feel like, though, that sometimes Oglas make it a little bit too obvious where their push is coming from, whereas Space Station. They, when they attacked downstairs, they were kind of all over the place with what was happening, and maybe all just caught on a little bit too late to what was actually happening, and uh, kind of just went from there. But you know, we'll see how it goes down. I think that August is going to attempt the same take here, and it just makes sense for them to do that. My big issue with how Space Station held this, as I said, they didn't impact Church Wall, and I think that they would have gained a lot more control if they had done that. I'm, I'm a big fan of Smoke bringing impacts on the basement defense here, as well as having illusion impacts. Yeah, the barbed wire is valuable, but at the point where the players are in the site, I think that the goo mines can do a lot of that work at that point. Um, so you perhaps would sacrifice the barbed wire on the smoke and just bring it on the bandit and the Jaeger instead. You've still got plenty of uh, plenty of potential there for, uh, for you know slowing the, slowing the attackers down. And, and, I, and I would agree with that, but I'm pretty sure Chala is incapable of playing bandit barbed wire because I've never seen this man do it. I'm pretty sure he always runs the nitro. But, I mean, we go we go back to that, we talk about it, but the last round is really bad from him, but Redeemer is going to take down Brian. That may be just GG right there and then, because that's Thermite dead, and they didn't go open Church Wall, they only got to open Motor Hatch with that ability. His carriers are going to go down, but it's kind of pointless at this point for Acid to even attempt this, because he only has one set of x carriers. A lot of this attack came down to the crutch that are going to get that Church Wall open with that done. But my man is going to nade out Bosco very easily. And this could be a 4v4 situation. Yeah, x carries are going to go down. It looks like half of them are going to get banished right there by Charla, but some of it does get opened up regardless. Charla still playing the Nitro Cell. And he's going to be pulling down Church to see what he can do here as my man finds yet another one. Rampy's off the board, and now it's a 3v4. 2v4 as Aston moves in. He takes down Redeemer, and my man finds another one. Oh, what is going on? It's all down to Charla la 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 to see what he can do. He's going to be holding down behind. He takes down my man. Finally, that monster is slain. Charles going to find three more if he wants to bring this in. He's going to rotate through Moto to see what he can do. Go for the free fires where he can, but the Shiza does go down. In a very bad situation now, flashes will go down. Chala is still holding down Moto where he can and peeking out what he can as well. He does have rotate into blue available to him, but this rotate should be cut off. But everyone from all is playing so safe right now. Setting up the crossfires and just baiting him in. Chala going to move all the way through, trying to find these gunfights, trying to do what he can. He just take down crazy, but he can't find another one yet. He will trade him out. Orglus take round about eight. Very well done from them in the attack. Yes, he did a good job there of clutching that kill because I had a small, small sneaking suspicion that if Chala picks up that kill onto Yeti, the Hibana was a long way away and there was a there was an impact hole at the bottom of, uh, of Armory right near main stairs that would have provided another angle of attack. It was definitely possible there for Chala to, uh, to do some good work, but Orglus, again, managing to chain two successful rounds together on the uh, Armory attack. Something that they did struggle with on defense. Are we seeing Clubhouse favoring the attackers today? Well, I mean, I've been bringing this point up the entire time. If there's no hard breach band, I really think that it is slightly attacker sided, and I think we're definitely seeing evidence of that so far. We are going to finally go up to CCTV room and cash room coming out from space station. Let's see how Defenders they're going to do this. What do you think of this uh, site? Because we've seen castle already here. I'm kind of interested to see where Rampy puts these castles. I think the castle's good. I, I like how it really slows the attackers down when they're looking to try and do anything um, below. And if they're looking to take stock control or hang around at the top of blue stairs, I really like how it can slow that down. And I also like how it can sort of make bedroom a little bit less of an issue because you can play some castles there and again, just slowing the attackers down. And like we've seen, if you're able to get an early pick on someone like a sledge, it really can affect the attackers in a negative way. Definitely, definitely can. And yeah, we are going to see armor panels go down, but on the exterior walls this time. And uh, again, I don't necessarily agree with this because there has been a sledge pretty much every single round. But what we mentioned last time when this happened, when Space Station were attacking, 
their sledge got picked very, very early on, and you mentioned how that's kind of affecting how quickly they can actually push downstairs. I think the value in putting them on external wall, or external doors, should I say, sorry, is a little bit less when we've seen Ash and Sledge brought every single time. That's just going to be like a bit of a free give in terms of opening it. And it's also something that the attackers can drone behind relatively safely. Like, they're going to really hear that if it's coming down. So it, I, I kind of feel like it gives a little bit too much over to, over toward the attackers. Um, but we can hear there the EMP devices going off. And I'm sure that the cash wall will be getting open pretty soon. We've already got the bottom of garage open. And my man there just going to put his drone in and see what's what. Brian there just peeking on through a uh, Xkairos hole there in the east wall toward Cash. Just trying to find out if there's anybody playing on in the side, but it does look as though there's no one really contesting Garage from SSG at this point. Not really at this point, though. Oh, uh, sorry, we have got Redeemer really, in there yeah, as Ledger. He's down. not actively contesting it, so you are still right. He's not actively contesting it, but he is still there. He does still have a presence as you'll be playing around this. The, the Glass not being here and the Capitown not getting picked by either side makes this much easier for Redeemer to play. And him having Charlie below is also very good as well. He's actually going to rotate all the way out of there that gets it impacted. He's just going to play bottom of oil pit. My man got away with this last time. I'm interested to see if Charlie gets away with something similar. Nades are going to come out from my man himself. And so we won't see any picks coming down just yet. Redeemer still playing here very aggressively and still holding it down just as successfully. He certainly got himself really locked in in that position. Uh, he's established a good foothold. Chala there is going to find the head of my man. So Sledge out of the picture. If there was any grenades left, that are not now. But Brian is going to make his way on into the site. Yes, he's going to pick up a kill onto Chala. Brian's going to get another one onto Redeemer. Another kill going to come out there from Yeti. And now we're in a four versus two. Bosco tries the C4 toss, doesn't quite manage it. The plant goes down. Thinking Nade takes out Yeti. Acid going to pick up the kill onto Bosco, all down to Thinking Nade. He's still got a gas canister in hand, which he does toss out just to try and provide himself a little bit of cover. Acid there, well placed to pick up that kill as Thinking Nade rotates through the top of Cash Stairs. And another round on the board for Auglis. They've now chained three together in a row. They're looking pretty good. Redeemer did a good job there of um, just kind of being annoying and just sitting there. And he timed it quite well with Charla going below, which is exactly what Loglas did as well on their defense. They played someone being really annoying in the top garage area. And then they rotated um, one of their defenders downstairs, my man on the Jaeger. And he went down below. And it's kind of ironic that my man dies to his own angle. So we'll, we'll see how the rest of this goes down. But yeah, Loglas are definitely proving that they're not only not to be trifled with and not to be put down but they're also proving this is actually very attacker sided right now yeah it really is and it it doesn't make things very easy when a game is you know falling heavily in one favor or the other whether that's the attackers or the defenders um i think that, like you said the bans do have a lot to come into that um, and having all the hard breaches available is really allowing a lot of stuff to get opened and it speaks a lot where we've seen both hard breaches brought pretty much every i think every single round up to this point um it does just go to show how powerful this is we're seeing the mirror now brought out by Shala. So he was obviously on the Jaeger last time, I believe, that we were down here in Armory. Um, but this time, switching things out, he's going to choose to go on the mirror. They're not going to reinforce Church Wall fully, which, you know, they could pay the price for that. He played Bandit last time. It, it was Bandit, was he? Yeah. Um, he was trying to Bandit trick, but I just want to point out as well that, yeah, this this pick is Attackers good for Chala, mostly because he's not doing anything here. They're not successfully bandit tricking because they're doing the same thing every round where they put Havana on the one one side, which covers two church walls, and they put the thermite on the left, and that's just impossible for bandit tricking. You can't do anything there. And, the, and on the flip side of that as well, you got my man tossing nades into into the site as well, and it just all starts to collapse from there for space station. So I like this adaptation coming out from them. I think it's much better, and I'm excited to see how the mirror plays out here. Mostly because we haven't seen much of mirror today. No, and it's it's an operator that has been available in uh, in a couple of games that we've casted so far, and it, it really hasn't seen a lot of playtime, which is strange because if mirror is available, usually you're going to see it played. Um, often the mirror can be played over in cash as well, which is something that, like we say, we haven't seen yet. But my man's going to go down there. He's going to get all the information that he needs and run back upstairs with his drone, just keeping that nice and safe, ready to deploy that on a flank watch. And the floor is no doubt going to start getting opened here, and that's really going to allow um, 
Auglis there to, to you know put a lot of pressure down onto the site. And there's even angles that they can get if they could get a grenade down onto um, onto where the mirror is playing. That can cause a little bit of disruption if they had a book. This would be a field day. Yeah, and this is this is what's allowing him to play this mirror so aggressively is that there is an open, so he can play that fairly aggressively. But there is an Ash to be wary of, and there could have been a Zofia coming out from August because they have brought it before. But it looks like the kitchen hatch should be able to get opened up. No, Rampy's gonna impact trick it. Oh, beautiful coming out from the Rampster himself as he's just go about just about halfway into the round now. And this is looking actually really, really good for SSG to hold on to this because there isn't that much progress coming out from August so far. No, and they've deployed a lot of utility as well to get to where they are, and it hasn't really paid off for them this far. Um, I'm not sure how many exothermic charges we've got left on Brian, but Acid is going to use his last ex Kairos there just in a desperate attempt to get this hatch open. They are going to stick this time, but he spent all of all three of the charges to actually get that open, and now it's all going to be onto SSG to just wait for the attackers to peek into their line of sight. There's no reason for them to peek anything at that at this point. 45 seconds left on the clock. We are going to be. I'm pretty sure we're going to be seeing a bit of a bloodbath in these final 45 seconds. Crazy there, just desperately trying to find anything he can onto the castle plane down there. But Redeemer is going to pick up the kill onto Brian. So that will take Thermite out of the picture. Smoke grenades are going to come. Uh, going to come out, flashbangs are getting dropped. It looks like we're going to see a three-man drop of Kitchen Hatch, and this is surely only going to end one way. Yes, he is going to be placed in the dirt tunnel, but I'm not sure if he's going to be able to get there in time. The drop is going to come through now. Acid is going to get taken out, I'm thinking they picks up a kill of his own as well. Yeti getting one and all down to Yeti now in this final situation, but he hasn't got the diffuser in hand. He picks up two kills, but time is certainly going to run out as the defenders just sit tight. And don't peek. Operators, you have run out of time. Space Station Gaming did a great job of winning that round through a little bit of patience. Auglis left themselves with no option but to just three-man drop Kitchen Hatch, and it just really didn't work out for him. Yeah, and and again, kind of from Auglis, they kind of make it a bit obvious where their push is coming from. And again, I want to put it down to the adaptation coming out from Space Station there. Picking the mirror completely destroyed uh, Auglis's plan there because they wanted to go church and open it up again in the same way. They see that mirror. I don't want to contest that. They're going to shift their attack instead. Then it becomes very obvious because they're putting multiple x down on the kitchen hatch. They're desperate to get it open. And I also want to point out as well, and I did mention this um, during the first half of this map, this is kind of why I like playing a smoke with impacts here. Because attack Rampy ran out of impacts to impact trick, but if the smoke had had impacts here as well, he could have impact tricked as well. He might have died for it because a bit of it was open as well. But if he impact tricks it, there would just be no entry coming out from Orgles. Yeah, I mean, the smoke grenades don't even come into the picture if the attackers don't get onto the site. So, um, yeah, definitely correct in that. But well, also what you could have done as well there is he could have smoked the hatch, then impact tricked it, or got himself into a position where he can impact trick. And now you're just wasting even more time and Orgles can't really do anything about it. So I still think there was ways in which Space Station could have played that better, but yeah, they do win the round, and I think a lot of it came down to adaptation with the mirror. So we're going to see Bosco choosing to, uh, choosing to take the bandit this time, which is good, because previous two rounds on cash, we haven't actually seen... Um, you know, we haven't actually seen much bandit play or much mute play. We've just kind of been giving the armory wall, uh, giving the CCTV wall up for free, um, and that makes it very difficult then to, uh, to, you know, to do anything with it. But we're of course on match point now, so SSG aren't really going to want to want to leave anything to chance at this stage. They're going to want to try and close this game out uh, and close this map out. So, oh, Brian, they're probably going to. Oh, I think he just manages to hear that as uh, as the bandit battery was about to be placed there, and he does manage to save his exothermic charge. Uh, so no doubt going to redeploy that over on the CCTV East wall. Bandit was downstairs in garage, but I think he's probably made his way back up by now. Crazy's going to pick up a nice kill there onto Thinking Nade, so Mute's going to be no more. The wall is going to be open, and that's going to put the remaining members of SSG in a bit of a tricky spot. Uh, but Redeemer well placed to peek out onto that East balcony, uh, just there trying to find their head on the Hibana, but Hibana just around the corner, not really too uh, too exposed there. Not too exposed there, and Redeemer again, as you Bomb mentioned, doing a great job, just holding this angle and just being annoying. Letting people know that he's here and he's contesting this angle is going to force potentially a garage take here, but they've already got the wall open and it is a 5v4. They can play off their man advantage here, 
Redeemer is not in an ideal situation to hold this, but Charlie is backing him up. He should be able to take the, the drone out, and he does so successfully. And the peaks are going to come out. Redeemer is getting pushed from every which way angle. And again, there's no capital coming out, so it's very, very hard for anyone to actually push him out of here without the use of frag grenades. And hopefully, they are going to come down. But Charlie is here playing bottom so that they can contest this. And there's just so many peaks coming out, but no kills just yet. Nades are going to come out from a man, however. He's going to need the corner there. Just, I assume there's, there was a Maestro Cam again in that corner, and that's why he needed it. But Redeemer going to be playing around here still very carefully. Yeah, perhaps. He maybe um, may just missed through that onto the... Uh, just, just hitting the door frame on the way in. And uh, that would have been a little bit unfortunate. But Redeemer there, he's still causing a nuisance for himself. And it's just really not allowing Oglis to pressure in at all. He's even waiting there to find his perfect shot. Because he knows that this push is certainly going to be coming very soon. Doesn't quite shoot there, which is maybe a bit of an oversight. Acid's going to pick up the kill on T'Challa on entry. Oh, and Acid's going to barrel stuff Bosco there. Rampy's going to get one onto Crazy. Rampy's going to make that a double before getting traded out by Brian. It's all down to Redeemer now. And he is very low health. One versus three. The plant is going to be going down. I'm not sure if he's got the information as to where the attackers are at this stage because he seems to be just letting them plant, but perhaps going to go for a retake on this. He's very unsure of where these attackers are at this point. And uh, he's got a tall order here. He's one versus three. Not got a great lot of health on the board, and there's no reason at all for Orglis to peek anything here. They just need to hold these angles and make sure that he doesn't be left with enough time to uh, to get this diffuser off. It's going to cause Redeemer to play a little bit aggressively. He's going to get up to the uh, the rotate hole there, but he knows that there's somebody that's going to be watching it, and it's Brian that's going to pick up that kill, just denying SSG at that match point. Yeah, that was definitely really well played coming out from Orglis. So, you know, we'll see how it does go down as we will see Orglis move through onto round number 12. One round away from bringing us into overtime on Clubhouse. And I think it's going to be a bit of that flip of a coin. It certainly could be a down to a coin toss depending on if we do go to overtime, if it does... Um, you know, depending on where the coin toss lies, if it lies on the attack side or if it lies on the defender side, it will depend on, uh, on you know, which team goes. Because, I mean, the current trend is that it seems as though we're seeing it go heavily one way or the other. Yeah, definitely. So we'll see how it does go down as we do see a six bit coming out from Redeemer on okay, Legion, which is good. I think he was trying to bait out a shield to be brought out here from August to just try and t change up the attack. But from both teams, we haven't seen a huge amount of adaptation. I still, I think I would have liked to see maybe a mirror here from, again from Space Station. And maybe play, you know, a mirror onto the server wall itself just to stop them from taking it so quickly. Because without a book, it's pretty hard to actually do a construction push here without getting Bandit Trick pretty much instantly. So, you know, we'll see how they do actually go through this round. Remaining. And we'll see how the lesion plays out here and what kind of adaptation that's going to bring in. Five seconds to go. It is certainly looking good for Orglis to bring this to an overtime match point Attackers purely based on the defeat. rounds that we've seen Attackers so far. We've seen, we've seen bomb. 11 rounds. Nine of those have been won on attack and two of those have been won on defense. So the odds are heavily stacked in Orglis's favor now. But SSG really aren't going to want to give up this and they're going to want to make sure that they're able to, uh, to close this one out, as we've said. So definitely still all to play for. And uh, we're going to be seeing CCTV cash yet again. It is an objective that I think this is the only objective that we have actually seen one on defense. Um, sorry, this is the only objective we've not seen one on defense. So it, everything really is pushing against uh, against SSG right now. As, uh, as the Toxin set. Yeah, so, you know, we'll see how this does go down. It's going to be all again, again, about getting this east wall open as quickly as possible. And Orgos are a big fan of doing this, where they put the Habana on one side, they put the Thermite on the other. You can't banish trick that. You like, what are you supposed to do in that situation? You're just completely locked out. And I think SSC are getting caught out with this constantly coming through. I think they're starting to realize this now, that they're just not going to be able to do that, and they're not going to be able to waste as much time as they maybe want to do. The problem with doing this, though, is that you can't pick the bandit doing that. Flashbangs are going to come through, frag grenades coming through as well. Desperately trying to pick this bandit this time, but he's going to try and go for the bandit trick, but he's not going to be able to get successfully. Yeah, Bosco realizes there's no way he's winning that. I'm still not sure what to think about the solution pick coming out from Redeemer. 
I don't mind the Legion pick. Maybe he felt like the Maestro wasn't really offering him all too much. Um, I don't know if the Evil Eyes were maybe getting destroyed a little bit too early by Ash, or if he just feels like he wants a little bit more um, sort of denial in the form of goo mines or a bit more information maybe for anyone that might be playing off-site. I think what was happening is that the ADS is getting destroyed immediately by Thatcher, and they're just destroying the two Maestro cams that are in the server. So, yeah, I don't think it's offering much. And also, he's often the last one alive in that position, so he isn't even offering much. You know, he he's holding Garage down, but it seems like Ogus don't even need the Garage control to actually bring this in. So, yeah, the Legion does add in a little bit more viability in terms of he's adding stuff in when he's not there on the map and he's still holding Garage, and he can still just sort of hold him. But we'll see how the rest of it does work out, but oh my god, my man just runs all the way in there with the SMG-11. There goes Bosco. And they're going to move all the way into sight. Acid finds one to redeem and find the Garage control in there. But Charla and Rampy go huge. They get kills of their own. Oh my god, Charla goes all the way in, but instantly traded out by my man. And now it's a 2v2, looking very, very close. 20 seconds left to go on the clock. It's not looking too good for Augus, but they do have control of Diffuser. They can still go through and see exactly what they can do here. But Crazy going to try and plant in the middle of the site here. One well, man left. tries to cover him. Thinking he just come around. He tries to beat this out. He knows the Attack Diffuser is going down, team. and the Diffuser will go down successfully. He tries to take the fight, but a man will actually get injured here, I'm pretty sure. Oh, but Nade takes him down, and now it's all down to Crazy on the Ash. Let's see how he can do it. He's looking pretty good so far. Holding a really weird angle, but the flashbangs go down. He goes for the pre fires but thinking Nade wins it out with the crouch peak. And Space Station Gaming will take the round and they'll take the map 7 5. SSG there, who pretty much against all the odds, uh, were able to pick up that defensive win on cash. Really wasn't something that I was anticipating seeing, especially with how that round was playing out in the early. Um, well, not the early, but the good couple of early picks that uh, my man got rushing through the construction side, just tearing through. Um, so, well, des very, very well deserved. And I think that it's certainly a sign of things to come that we've definitely got a good game on our hands because Auglis definitely, you know, Auglis came out there to play. Definitely. I mean, you always see Clubhouse with this kind of score line going through where it's like very, very, very close, but. It always tends to go to one side or the other, and I kind of feel like it's a bit of an unbalanced map because of that, but...